No, oh, jeez. Oh, All right. Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? My name is Nate, and today I'm going to be giving a basic guide about playing Widowmaker. Not this, not the weapon in TF2. Uh, this, right here. Wait, no, no, not that. Uh, this, right here. Do, do you see me? If you guys saw my TF2 sniping tutorial, then I'll be covering some of the points I mentioned in that video, and putting them in the context of Overwatch. Sniping is freaking fun, and I recently just found out how much fun Widowmaker is to play. She's incredibly powerful if you can land consistent shots, and she can change the outcome of a game if you get good picks and make people too scared to approach you. So if you guys want to learn how to improve your aim, or just learn more about playing Widowmaker, then you've come to the right person! I mean, I have a whole 26 hours in Widowmaker. That means I know what I'm talking about, right? Right? So first off, we'll just cover her weapons, abilities, and so forth. All of the, you know, boring basic stuff. Widowmaker is a defense hero that specializes in sniping. She has 200 health, and uh, she has purple skin. It's not the greatest look. Her main weapon can function as both an assault weapon and a sniper rifle. While in assault mode, she can fire about 10 shots per second and deal a moderate amount of damage. However, Widowmaker is going to deal the most damage while in sniping mode. She can scope in, charge her shots, and deal an incredible amount of damage if you aim it right. While scoping in, your rifle will charge the shot for about 1 second before reaching 100% damage. This will give you just enough time to line up your shot, so charging up shouldn't be a huge issue. Just be aware it won't do nearly as much damage if you don't wait for it to reach 100%. A fully charged headshot is going to do about 300 damage. That's enough to kill a lot of heroes in just one hit. And let me tell you, getting that headshot is one of the most satisfying things ever. Hearing that dink sound go off is just... Ooh, so good. Obviously, getting headshots is the best way to go, and we'll talk more about them later. A fully charged body shot will do about 120 damage. Even though that's not nearly as much as a headshot, that's still quite a lot of damage. In fact, that's over half the health of a lot of heroes. If you land two good shots on them, they'll go down without a problem. Don't worry about getting a few body shots every so often. In fact, they're encouraged if you think someone has low health. It's a lot quicker than taking the time, you know, to line up a headshot that would do the same thing. As for her ammo consumption, she has 30 ammo and each charge shot will take away about 3. So it's not, it's not a huge problem. Plus, her reload time is pretty quick. Next we'll cover Widowmaker's Grappling Hook. The Grappling Hook is probably the most useful thing any sniper could have in any game. The Grappling Hook is activated by looking at a solid object, a wall, or a ledge, and pressing Shift. Doing so will pull you towards the point you're aiming at. This allows you to get up to higher places or get away from other players. Now here's the cool part about this. Pressing your jump key right before you reach the end of your hook will actually propel you a short distance. This will help you go a bit higher and get to places you couldn't go before. It also helps you to pull off trick shots, and I'll cover that a little bit later too. Widowmaker's next weapon is her Venom Mine. This little mine can stick to walls in just about anywhere you shoot it. This mine will trigger and explode once an enemy player walks near it, causing it to do about 75 damage. However, you should be aware that the smoke will also do damage to yourself if you're too close. I can't tell you how many times I've done this without thinking, and I end up looking like an idiot when I kill myself. Seriously, keep your distance from it. Lastly, Widowmaker's ultimate ability allows you and your team to see through walls for about 15 and a half seconds. This is incredibly helpful not only for you, but for your teammates so they can see where the other players are. Even if you die, your teammates will still be able to see players. I'd suggest using this as often as you can, considering there's not a whole lot of risk to it, plus it'll help your team keep the other team at bay. Alright, so the basic stuff is pretty straightforward. If you play her a couple times, you'll get the gist of it. The biggest reason I like making these sniping tutorials is because I want to help you guys get better at aiming. If you want to play Widowmaker really well, then it's kind of important to know how to actually hit people. If you saw my TF2 sniping video, then you already know this. If not, maybe I can help you in some way. I like to practice aiming by categorizing it into three different parts. The first one is tracking. 
This involves keeping your crosshair near a player for as long as you can, and shooting when you have the shot lined up. This helps you understand the speed of enemy heroes, and get used to your sensitivity. Practicing track aim first is probably the quickest way to get better. The second one is flicking. This is done by quickly flicking your mouse over the player, and shooting as your crosshair passes over them. This is a bit tricky at first, but you'll be flicking a lot more once you're comfortable with your aim. Flicking will let you make quick decisions and react to players moving back and forth a lot. The last part is what I like to call Guitar Hero Aim. You're basically predicting where an enemy player will go, but letting your crosshair hover over an area, and then all you really do is just shoot as they pass over it. You'll use this a lot more when you're waiting for players to walk past the wall or something. It'll let you hit them more reliably because you won't need to adjust your aim as much. If you guys want to practice aiming by yourself, I would suggest doing this in a custom game. This is actually something that someone suggested a while ago. First, you set up a custom game and put the enemy team full of hard and a bots. Then you go into settings and change each of these options. Skirmish, ability cooldown to 0%, and headshots only. Doing this will let you practice getting headshots without worrying about taking damage. Plus it's a fantastic warm up to get headshots with just about any hero. Alright, so all of the aiming stuff is covered. It's finished! Finito! Don't stress too much about being really good at aiming because it'll all just come naturally by playing Widowmaker a lot. Now we should get to the fun stuff by playing in an actual game. So first things first, if we wait until we're on the defending side, right? Because, you know, she's a defense hero? Wrong. Widowmaker is amazing, and she's absolutely 100% useful on both offense and defense. Just kidding. If you want to practice or you don't feel super comfortable playing Widowmaker yet, it's probably a good idea to wait until you're on the defending side. She can be very good on offense, but if you don't feel confident in yourself yet, then I would suggest just playing on defense for a while. Plus, most of the maps are designed for defense to have better sight lanes. If you're on a control map, you can sort of use your own judgment for that. Iloise is a pretty good map for playing Widowmaker, because there are a lot of open areas and long sight lanes. Legion Tower, on the other hand, is a lot more closed off, so it's really up to you to decide if you'll do very well. Alright, quiz time! Let's say you have an opportunity to kill three enemy players. A Roadhog, a Mercy, and a May. Which one should you choose to kill? Trick question! You're supposed to kill everyone, dummy! Why would you only kill one player? It's stupid. Okay, let me ask a different question. Which one should you choose to kill first? This is what we like to call prioritizing, or basically going after a certain player before killing the others. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, and Hanzo mains, you actually have teammates! Even if you're the best sniper in the world, you ain't gonna do nothing if you aren't keeping an eye out for your team by killing certain enemies first to make your teammates' lives easier. Usually, I would suggest killing the Mercy first. She gives her teammates more health, and there's the chance that she could revive her teammates back to life. By killing her first, this makes it harder for their team to get their health back. However, sometimes it may be smarter to kill the Roadhog first. If he's using his ult or he's causing a lot of trouble for your team, then it might be a good idea to kill him first and make everyone's lives easier. Or maybe you should kill Mei first. Actually, I'd probably instinctively kill Mei first without giving a second thought. She's annoying, and your teammates will love you for killing her. Just use your judgement. Go after players who you think would be better to kill first, but in the end, just try to kill everyone. Now, even though you may be perched up on a really high ledge and away from danger, there are a lot of heroes who can easily kill you if you aren't being careful. Winston and D.Va are the first heroes who come to mind. Winston can jump on your face and just hold his mouse button down to kill you in a matter of seconds. D.Va can protect herself with their shield and fly into you, making your life a billion times harder. You really need to watch out for players who could be a potential threat to you. Even a Genji can kill you from the other side of the map. I can't tell you how many times I've killed myself by shooting at him while he's deflecting. I still do this all the time. Just keep an eye out for people who could easily take you out and act accordingly. I'd suggest using your grappling hook to escape or get closer to your teammates. It's not a very good idea to take them on by yourself unless you're really confident in your aim. Enemy Widowmakers are also a huge counter. If they see you first, there's a good chance they'll kill you and you can't do anything about it. This is why it's really important to be moving all of the time. Even if you're by yourself and you think no one's around, if you move a lot, then it'll be harder for other players to kill you. Getting into different positions is also very important. If you're sniping from the exact same spot the entire game, people will know where to find you. It's especially obvious when you shoot, because your shots leave trails and they're super loud. If you move to different spots, then it'll be easier to catch people off guard and kill them. Now unfortunately, one of the problems about playing Widowmaker 
is that other players will likely find you first before you find them. When you're scoped in, it becomes harder to see what's around you, and heroes like Tracer and Reaper can pick you off easily if you're distracted. What I would suggest doing is leaving your Venom Mine in a place where someone would easily trigger it if they came after you. This helps a ton. Because this can basically block off a path if someone were to come after you. And if they trigger it or destroy it, then you'll know where they are. The last two points I want to cover are some of the more interesting ways to kill enemy players. The first is that as a sniper, you're able to headshot players from any distance, even if they're standing point blank in front of you. If you're in a situation when you know you're going to die, or you know they have an advantage, sometimes it's kind of fun to be a little bit ballsy and get a really quick shot even if they're only a couple of feet from you. There's a chance you can get really lucky and kill them with a headshot, or you know, a body shot if you act really quick, and it could just save your life. So don't be afraid to take those crazy up close shots every so often. The second is what's called a trick shot. A lot of you have probably seen a few people do this at one point or another. A trick shot can be done by doing the grappling hook trick I mentioned earlier. When you hook onto a ledge and propel yourself into the air by pressing your jump key, you can get a trick shot on someone by scoping in and killing them as you're flying throughout the air. This is really fun to do, and it's actually a great way to pick off enemy players from a spot you aren't normally able to get to. The only tricky part is readjusting your aim as you start to fall, but once you do it a few times, it'll become muscle memory and you can do it a lot more often. The very last thing I want to mention is your sensitivity and crosshair, because when it all comes down to it, just use what you feel the most comfortable with. I personally like to use a green colored crosshair because it's easier to see. As for my sensitivity, I like to set it so I can do at least a 180 degree turn when my mouse reaches the end of my mouse pad. But seriously, just use what you feel good using. And practice! And get good! And get accused of hacking! Widowmaker is so much fun! Just practice and have a good time. Even if you didn't take anything from this video, just keep practicing with Widowmaker, and it'll all come down naturally without any explanation. Besides, all you really have to do is click on heads. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.